back to Calabunga Corner. In this episode, we are sitting here with Kirk, who was Toka for Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. Thank you so much for joining You're us welcome. today. Now, what got you into the entertainment business? Did you start off into acting or stunts? I started in stunts. Years ago, when I was about 18 or 19, I was reading about I was reading a motorcycle magazine about... Um, a motorcycle rider who, who rode in and wanted to be a stunt guy, so they gave him what, you know, an idea of what to do, and that sounded like a pretty good idea. So I was out, I, lived, I grew up in Connecticut, so I, I uh, started making some phone calls, and a couple years later I was out in California and uh, doing extra work for the first about two and a half years. And then uh, started working on some TV shows and the features and working my way up the ladder. It takes a lot of time, it takes years. Did you have any special training for your stunt work? Uh, well, I grew up riding motorcycles, things like that. I was very active, very athletic, things like that. And then when I came out to California, I met up with a stuntman named Lenny Gear, who was known for taking younger guys and training them. So there's a group of us, about four or five of us, that would go out every Sunday to his ranch out in Calabasas and do fights and falls and whatever we could figure out to do, just to keep trained you know, and do what we needed to learn. So. With doing the, the movies and everything, what was your first major stunt role that where you got a, a good movie or TV show that was, became a hit? A stunt role? You mean like a to, just a stunt person? Yeah. Um, what was the first one? I used to work on a thing called uh, it's a t TV show, Matt Houston. I used to work on that for years. It was a, that was a that was television though. Feature wise. I did a thing, that was a good one, that was back in 84 or 5, I think it was, Dublin John Cusack, um, down in Mexico, down in uh, Extapa, and it was called, oh boy, Hot Pursuit. That was it. <laughs> so I had a full run on that, Dublin John, and got to know him, we hung out and, and did a lot of good, good gags on that. And that was my first big one, I guess, yeah, back in 84, I think. So you were in it for quite a while before getting the role as Tolka. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I worked, um, like I said, extra work for three or four years. Then I started doing stunts. Then I started coordinating a little bit. And then in 91, it was, and then two. Well, the did. filming would have been in 1990. For, for because the yeah. movie came out in March. Okay. Did you know of Ninja Turtles before you uh, worked on the movie? Yeah. A friend of mine, Tom DeWeer, was on the first one. So he played a big role in getting the job on the second one. Oh. It's funny because we <laughs> they needed someone tall and um, athletic. It was nice, so they, they, they called a bunch of stunt guys in. <laughs> so I was, uh, I was well, I'm 6'1", a little bit over 6'1", but they needed someone tall. So I put these lifts in my shoes about two inches, right? And, and I walked into the interview and I was kind of like teetering. I wasn't very stable with them. And, uh, he goes, oh, wow, Kurt, you're 6'4 today, or something like that. And it was all the interview on tape, too. So I said, yeah, I, was like, I kind of walked in like this. I wanted to look tall and big, so, but I, I got the job. So it was, it was, a, it was a long-running job also. That was a good one down in North Carolina. Did you get flown out to the Henson's Creature Shop for a full London. body move? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I went to London and then did a fitting and then flew back. And then about a month later, we went down to North Carolina for about two months, I think. What was it like going through the casting process of... Being getting the full body cast at the Henson's Creature Shop. Oh yeah, I've done it a couple times on a couple different shows. It's just the full body cast. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's everything. You just get just get in a mold. You sit like this for about not too long, probably thirty minutes or something. They put tubes in your nose and in your mouth and that kind of stuff. So it's uh, and then you let it harden and they peel it off you and you're done. <laughs> and you look at yourself. You go, oh, I don't look that. When they make the bowls, you go, I look like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God, I got to work on the arms or something, you know. Um, but yeah, I've done a little, I've done a few other uh, costume jobs. Oh, that's cool. I don't want to do them anymore. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need to do them anymore. They were fun, but they're a lot. Of, it's a lot of work. It's yeah, of, it's hot. It's, it's, you're restricted. You got you're asked to do things you don't. You could probably do without the costume, but you know. Difficult things. Now, did you do rehearsals before the costumes were done, um, trying them on and stuff? Uh, so? Yeah, we did like we did blocking and things, and then when the costumes arrived, they would you know they fit a fit a you know, final fit on them, and then we would do some rehearsals and things. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, 
it was a long process of getting in the costume. It was you know over you know it wasn't like makeup. It was just body parts. But you know it took a good hour or so to put it on, and then you'd sit there with this big you know, big thing and sit in this chair, and your little head popping up. And uh, then you'd go. You they wait till the last minute. You do rehearsal without the head on because the head was the worst. It was it was held in all the heat, and if it was the stunt head. It didn't have fans in it. It was just it was it was the, the mouth didn't really move. I think, um, but but the, the animatronic head was a little cooler. It had fans in it, and the mouth would move. And you, basically, you're looking out below. The, the the head, the mouth was up here, so you kind of look there, or you could look out the netting below it um, to see what was going on. And a lot of times, you're working blind. You know, anything out of this range is you know you can't really see it. So. <laughs> but um, how was your mobility of your head? Were you able to turn your head around it and was, stuff like that? Or it was, was okay. It was somewhat. It, what, what they had, they had just basically, I don't know what they did because I didn't even watch them do it. But I know they had it, they buttoned it down, fastened it, and then I would move it. And then after a while, it just kind of, you know, way on the back of your neck. So they ended up rigging up a bungee to the top of the head down to my back. So once I got it all set up there, kind of crank it down, which would lift it up, and then it would kind of compress your neck. But it, was, it saved the neck muscles, but kind of hurt you. And uh, that restricted <laughs> the motion even a little bit more. But it was, it was a long time ago. I'm surprised I can remember all this. Now, with the turtle movie, what was it like your first day on the set, coming in there and seeing all these amazingly huge sets built up? What was it? It was interesting, like anything. All, all film film uh, stages or, or, or sets are pretty phenomenal. You know, you like this, and they'll use one little corner of it. You, know, you get to see it all sometimes. But anyway, yeah. it was it was pretty interesting, you know, because it's it was probably it was our first. It was my first, probably my first costume job, I guess. I only had probably three or four, but it was probably my first one. And, and it's like a, you know, it's like a fairy tale, or it's like a, it's, it's like a, it's, it's imagination. It's not real stuff. So you look at it, you go, oh, that's what that's for. Ah, oh, that's not real, but okay. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it was interesting. Now, with uh, the turtle movies, was there any scenes that were easier than the others, or any scenes you remember being extremely difficult? <laughs> scenes. We had. They had to flip a car once. That was kind of fun. Did we? Did we? Did we? Didn't the, both of us razz our eyes? Yeah. Arms? That was. A, that was. A, I remember that day because we went in. Like at, I don't know, noon or something. I don't know. It was getting there two or three, uh, and then we rehearsed. We said, "Okay, go home and come on back about uh, two a.m." Like, so <laughs> it was like a, like a five ten or whatever. Like ten hours. We just got to take off, and they said, "Go." Wherever, go up to dinner, come on back later. All right. It's kind of funny. Uh, other than that, there was, I'm trying to think of, I can't remember the scenes. So, well, there was jumping into the sewer. That um, was Dave Rowden. That was the only was, stunt oh, he did. Really? His feet kicking at the bottom? Yeah. That was Dave. That was Dave. The only thing, the only thing he ever did. <laughs> uh, there was throwing Donatello. I mean, oh, wait a minute. I do my own stunts. <laughs> That's right. All actors do their own stunts. Uh, I, I they, heard they, that, uh, they say that anyways. Mark did a, did a lot of his own stuff. Oh, Mark too. does, yeah. yeah. Mark's a stunt guy. Mark and I yep. stunt. In fact, uh, all the turtles, one of the turtles, in fact, all the turtles are actors, yeah. basically. Our costumes, they required something that they knew they could be athletic enough to carry it out and do it all. So they, they wanted to bring stunt guys in for the bigger costumes. And basically, each had stunt doubles. And, uh, but, like I said, they didn't do much because we were stunt guys in the costume anyways. It's your own job that you normally do, so it's like, why can't yeah. someone else do yeah, it? Yeah, that was kind of that's, that's kind of what the producers were thinking too. <laughs> why do we need two of them? The producers are known to be extremely overprotective of those heads. Were they that way with the Toka head as oh, well? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we had stunt heads and animatronic heads. They're really expensive. I can imagine. I don't know the price, but very expensive. Did you use the stunt head? Both. You used both. Well, mostly the animatronic because that was most of the close-ups. Yeah. All, all the, yeah. <laughs> did you check into any of the other Ninja Turtle medias? Did you ever read the comics, watch the cartoons, or the, any of the movies? Not really. No. The movies, yeah, if I saw the first one, because it was pretty, you know, it was pretty popular, and my buddy worked on it, and so, yeah, I saw the first one. So, now, what cartoons or things did you grow up in? What other interests have you had? I grew up with Bugs Bunny and... All the, all the Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes and yeah. Three Stooges. Oh, awesome. There we go. That, that right there tells you about my childhood. <laughs>
Now, what are some films or TV series that you have worked on since you did Ninja Turtles? I've recently done all the um, Michael Bay, Platinum Dunes horror films. Texas Chainsaw. You do know that he now has his hands on the new Ninja Turtle movie that's going to be live action. Uh, actually, his company Platinum Dunes is I've been yeah. talking to him for a while about that. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, uh, it, it, you, are you, would you be interested in working on the new live-action movie if they came? I probably would. I, I, I imagine, well, they, I, like I said, this is called Platinum Dunes. It's, it's yeah. Michael Bay's company. Two of his producers have used me in the last five films to coordinate. It's like The Hitcher, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw. Um, they just they just, they just have what they were going to do. They gave me a call about it. It's not happening. Anyways, that's on their plate. There's three or four different things on their plate right now that... Uh, they're looking at and Ninja Turtles is one of them. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, that'd be great. It'd be a, it'd be a full circle, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be. Yeah, be like, okay, I'm gonna retire now. <laughs> started up, finished up with the turtles. <laughs> well, you started off before the turtles. I did. From ten, what, yeah. ten years before the turtles, actually. So. Yeah, a lot of people we've talked to have actually started off with the turtles. Yeah. So it's yeah. been uh, interesting to find out where people are with that as well. Mm -hmm. It's really a wonderful cast and crew brought together for the turtle movies mm -hmm. and the different experiences coming through bringing them together yeah. and really really cool to hear yeah. so. it was a fun day it was a fun set it was you know, some shows you work on it's just it's a lot of work it's a lot of screaming it's a lot of this it's, this wasn't one of those shows which was nice it was always the calm you know the, the good memories yeah yeah more fun than it was nightmare that's cool. Yeah. Yay. Um, is there anything that you're working on now that will be coming out soon that you are allowed to share with us for the fans to look forward to? No. I just finished, well, I did Transformers 3. I was a co partner with Transformers 3, which just came out a couple months ago. And then uh, I have been working on some TV stuff and a couple features. Nothing, nothing, no big long runs right now. Just kind of relaxing. Okay. Having fun. Yeah. Enjoying life. Enjoying, enjoying the kids. So, with the Ninja Turtle movie, there's the pre fight donut scene where the turtles are brought the donuts. Yeah. And uh, Toka and Razar are to eat donuts. Did they put real donuts in the costumes' mouths? Yeah. Yeah, I believe I remember that they were. Because basically, the mouth was up here for me. So I could kind of see out the mouth if it was open, and below the mouth if it was closed, there was a net. You can see that. And I remember them putting donuts and just closing my eyes and <laughs> pieces flying by my head. And was, yeah, they did put real donuts in my mouth. Yeah. But that's cool to hear they were yeah. going to put food into these things. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure they pulled it apart and cleaned it for hours afterwards. Very donuts can be crummy. They're very meticulous in their work. Very yeah. Static. And speaking of Henson's, they designed these costumes with all these different features. And yeah. Your hand had only had like four fingers, so mm -hmm. not all five had their own. Right. How was your hands in the costume? It was, the stunt hands was basically you pose, they're posable. You just put it in one position, then you held the bar inside, and that's how you move your hand. That was it, posable. And then the animatronic hand, or the, the, the mechanical hand, they called it, there were cables that ran to each finger. And each there were two cables to one bar that you grab on with your fingers. And if you did this, it would make the fingers do this. So you could pull that at an angle, it would move. So if you did this, the hand would do that too. So you were doing puppeteering inside the hand. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. It was basically wow. like, it's like a claw with a. You know, it was electronic. It was cable activated. Well, yeah, it's just still a lot different than the yeah. turtle hands, which just were right. Their right, hands were right. like that. They you know they they. They say like act through the costume, like I'm a stunt guy. <laughs> but it's funny because there one time I was standing, and my back was getting sore. And it's like, so I, I go like this. They go, what'd you just do? I said, like, no anything. Do that again. It's like my back is sore. That looks awesome. It looks like you're taking a deep breath. And well, good. Like it helps my shoulders. <laughs> but they, uh, they, so they, 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 they would tell me they were talking to me all the time. Okay, do that shoulder thing, like. Because it made me look like I was breathing heavy or something. So, that. <laughs> so that was part of the acting to the costume, I guess. Was, you know, they, they, they did tell you, it was like, don't ever just you know, relax in here because it, your costume loses its life. So yeah. always be moving, just keep your finger keep, uh, something, you know, so it doesn't just look like a dead piece of rubber. 
Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a doll. Um, speaking of the dolls, um, we know there was a few on the set, uh, like the Michelangelo that Rosar threw was not uh, actually Misha mm -hmm. um, when it was the spinning. Uh, the Donatello that was thrown into the roof by Toka and the Turtle movie, was that, um, how was that scene done? Where Was that you, your stunt double, who grabbed Don after he says, um, um, a poor excuse for a turtle mm -hmm. and hit him with the bow? And, What was the question? No, I'm kidding. Uh, um, uh, it, I th think I threw him. It was Tom DeWeer who we threw. I know that it was a ratchet. We threw him all over. It went through a window? Is that what it was? It was uh, he went through the roof. roof. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Tom. Yeah, I, I'm sure I did it. It was no big deal for me to do that. So double. Now, other costume works. What are some of the other gigs that you have done in full costume? There's a, quite a couple. I did, uh, we talked about Goro for uh, Mortal Kombat. It was a creature from like the Black Lagoon character, ninety three or four, for a thing called Danger Island. Uh, Kathy Island. I don't remember the actors, but it was a that was kind of a fun job with him. Boy, I had to wear dentures. It was the worst because the mouth came way out here, and they put these dentures in, but they used denture cream or whatever that crap is. It was awful. I put my thing in, I put my, my dentures in and did the scene and they took the, they, they could reach in to pull the teeth out. And when they did, you have all this stuff in your mouth and you can't get it out. It's, it's denture grip or whatever. It's like paste. You couldn't get it out. It was awful. So I never wore that again. <laughs> and then, and Goro was a good a good example. I, and that's another, another problem I had was there's only one Goro of all, all times. It was a stunt Goro, me. You know, it was a Goro character. Well, they had headset in there so you, had a little, you, could, you, could, you couldn't see the arms were up here or forearms were here the head was up here and you had no visions but you had a, a, a video camera like a little eyepiece so you could see where you're going you had earphones mouth you know, I mean, a microphone and you had water so you're pretty much in air so you're pretty much you're all set inside for the one costume one day they call us oh we need two Goro sticks you got to come in it's a dream sequence they just came up with. So there's two Goros standing side by side. So, okay, so I get there and said, okay, well, you can't, you're going to stand, I'll even stand for five minutes, but you you can't have the have the, the hot set. You can't have the, the microphone, the earpiece, the eye, eyepiece. Also, basically, put you in. You have no uh, contact with the outside world, and just really short. So I get into this thing, it's total sensory deprivation for like 45 minutes. I'm just sitting there. And finally, I just, then they said, okay, we're sure. they, have, they had air for me. At the end of it, they said, but we're getting ready to shoot this thing. Okay, I'm going to shut off your air for a couple, for a little bit. And I'm, going, I'm trying to say no. You couldn't hear me, so I'm just started shaking the whole body. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and so they said, they, I heard him scream into the costume. Like, the other guy said he could hold his breath for almost a minute. And I went, no. <laughs> no, I can't talk. So, and then uh, a couple other costumes. I did things with little, little big foot. Played a couple days on that. It's because the main guy was out. But that was about it. Not a, lot, not a lot of custom work, but it. still a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah and memories. Sometimes, that, oh yeah, yeah. All the memories. <laughs> one, one last thing. Can you say cowabunga for the fans? Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you, everyone. We'll catch you next time here on Cowabunga Corner. <laughs>